Hello and welcome to another edition of Resource Review. Today we'll be looking at three completely different resources for primary geography. Map symbol flashcards. Someone mentioned it earlier on and we weren't quite right. Uh, as at? Camp. A camp? No, I don't think it's a camp. A wooden jigsaw, customised to feature an aerial photograph of your school. Try and think of a name that can describe or sum up what your jigsaw piece shows. And a set of posters from the Geographical Association. What do our panel think? We'll find out here on Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is our subject expert, Paula Richardson. Paula is an educational writer and geography advisor to schools. Joining Paula today on the panel, we have Colin Hinson, a freelance educational writer, and Alan Mills from the Specialist Schools and Academies Trust. Well, Paula, let's begin then with the map symbol flashcards. Can you explain this resource to us? Yes, it's um, a set of cards um, using all the map symbols you'll find on maps and the exp explanations for them. Um, they're individual cards which make a wonderful primary resource when you're teaching young children um, about ordnance survey maps. So, Colin, what about that? <laughs> oh, that's a uh, place with a view. Place with a yeah, viewpoint, excellent. What about that one, Alan? Well, there's a church. <laughs> I think there's a steeple. Excellent. <laughs> Very good indeed. Steeple as well. Yes. Well, that's the resource, Paula, but what made you choose it over everything else that's out there for map reading? I find these, they're, they're wonderfully produced. They're produced by the Ordnance Survey and they link in, of course, to all the maps the children are going to use for the rest of their lives, the Ordnance Survey maps, and it's a wonderful introduction in a fun game way. Well, thank you very much. To see the flashcards in use, we visited Wilbury Primary School in Edmonton, North London, where teacher Mike Michaels is using them with his class of seven-year-olds. Right, this morning, we'll be having a look at these flashcards. Now, there are lots of things we could do with these, so let's have a look at one or two and see which ones you may recognise. Today, I was using a resource called Map Symbol Flashcards, produced by Ordnance Survey. Some cards show pictures and other cards uh, have words on to explain what the actual pictures mean. This one, someone mentioned it earlier on, and we weren't quite right. Uh, as at? A camp. A camp? No, I don't think it's a camp. Jaden. A, a railway station this time. The way I introduced these into the lesson was to show some very obvious ones to the children, and then once they'd become a bit familiar with that, I gave out some work, some different maps for the children to try and identify as many of the symbols on the maps. And then another group of children actually worked with these cards, matching up pictures to the words so they could put them together and know what the things meant. If you can't find one, then you miss your go and someone else goes next, OK, and it'll come back round to you. I would definitely use this resource again and I, I, would, I would buy it for the school. Um, I think it would be useful to have a number of packs of these around. I think at any time that a teacher is going to be introducing um, map reading to children, uh, then this has got to be actually the way to go. If I was to change this resource, I think I'd rather like the cards to be somewhat bigger. But otherwise, it's a pretty good resource. I asked the children uh, what they thought of this resource, and they all agreed it was a very, very easy way of learning, and that they found them sort of stimulating and interesting. And because they were like cards, they felt they were playing a game. So they're actually playing and learning at the same time, which has always got to be the best way, really. Well, Paula, what would you say to that? criticism there from the teacher, although he liked them, he did think they were a bit small for really effective whole class teaching. Um, I believe a set now is underway being made, may made larger. Uh, but the thing about it, he did bring out the point, it's a game and children are used to using this size for games and the, the size of them actually makes it very good for interactive work in paired group, small group work in the classroom. Right, OK. Colin, what are your views on a resource like this? And the thing that, that struck me was that they're, they're one game cards. The teacher was showing us you know, what, what he was doing with, the, with, his, uh, with his class on that one, but I was trying to think about how, that could, how these cards could be used in other ways. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I was sort of thinking quite hard about it and finding it quite difficult to think of ways in which these cards could be used in, mm -hmm. in a variety of ways, not just holding up a card and saying, what does this mean, now find it on a map. 
Mm, Paula, what would you say to oh, that? There are lots of ways of using it. You can obviously <laughs> use very simple mix and match identification games, as they, sorting games as they were using. Um, one of the benefits is, this is these are symbols about real life and real maps. And so children can actually start using maps and begin to identify, find the symbols actually on the maps themselves. Alan, I mean, they, they are a standalone resource there, but Again, do you see the strength of them really being used with other resources? It all seemed a bit limited, a bit slightly pointless, many other ways of doing it. But again, as part of one resource in a, in a sort of a whole panoply of others, it would work. But on its own, nothing particularly exciting. It's how you use them in the yeah, end, isn't it? it? You know, you can, you, can, you can take a resource like this and if the teacher has the skill and the imagination to come up with exciting ways of using this, then it's a fantastic resource. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to resource number two, which is rather unusual. It's this jigsaw here, but it's of an aerial photograph. So tell us a bit more about it, Paula. The idea is that, in fact, the, the jigsaw is made up of photograph based on the school or your house or wherever you want to choose. And with the technology today, this is possible to do. What is interesting here, of course, is this particular school that the jigsaw has been made for is in quite an urban area. Uh, and at first glance, it would probably look fairly difficult and fairly confusing. Uh, and there are ways around of actually using it. But the idea is, of course, Focusing on the particular school, a particular place you know, um, adds that excitement uh, and interest about knowing the place already. Well, thank you very much. To see the jigsaw in use, we visited Grafton Primary School in London, where teacher Emma Davy is using it with her Year 4 class. The resource is a 30-piece jigsaw of an aerial photograph of Holloway area with our primary school in the centre. First of all, we generated ideas about what we knew already about Holloway Road and this area, so key buildings, major roads. Then the children were encouraged to think about what an aerial photograph was and if they were a bird or a, in a plane taking that aerial photograph, what would this area look like from above? Let's presume that this is Seven Sisters. So where's Eburn Road going to be along there? Before we actually started making the jigsaw, the children were able to look at the individual pieces. And that was really useful in being able to determine similarities and differences between different areas of Holloway. I'm going to say, call this one People's Homes. This is called People's Homes. So try and think of a name that kind of describe or sum up what your jigsaw piece shows. I was hoping to be able to use the Talk jigsaw as a whole class activity. You know, I could see a really nice collaborative whole class exercise coming from it. But actually that's just impossible with the size of the jigsaw. I think as an exercise, the children were actually quite stimulated by the idea of, wow, a jigsaw, you know, and actually liked that. But on a, on a basis of actually what I wanted it to achieve, which was to learn more about the local environment, the actual assembling of the jigsaw didn't really facilitate that process. If the resource was bigger and the photograph was less blurred, then I would certainly recommend it because I think that there are a lot of activities that you can do following on from the assembly. But as it stands at the moment, and as it's quite small, it couldn't be used as a whole class. It could be used in small groups. But um, I think I would struggle to, to find a direction with it. Well, Paula, how would you respond to that criticism there that it's just not big enough? Yes, I can sympathise with what she's saying, uh, but the actual aim of the puzzle uh, is, is perhaps different. Um, there are many larger ones which can be used as floor puzzles and so on. This actually um, is a challenge puzzle, uh, and I would see it used um, as part of a package of work on the local environment, a good starter in where you're rotating activities round um, and then perhaps bring it back to the centre in the end, asking children to investigate by themselves, follow route ways, go from A to B, uh, and try and work out their homes and so on. All right. Alan, what, what do you think of the jigsaw puzzle aerial photo resource? 
The thing that concerns me is obviously a digital photograph. It would be so easy for them to supply the digital photograph for use on a whiteboard, and presumably not that difficult to separate it to use on a whiteboard in the same way as the jigsaw is. And then you could have both, the small group thing, the class group, the interactivity, all those things are there. Once you've got that resource and they've taken the picture, they would be able to supply that as well. Because I think that is, it, it's fairly limited, as the teacher said, and I thought she did a brilliant job. Using a jigsaw as a teaching tool, I, I, I felt a little bit sceptical about it because why a jigsaw and why not just the aerial photograph, you know, and so on. It seemed to me, I wasn't quite sure why a jigsaw, because if the pupils are concentrating on putting the jigsaw together, perhaps they're actually losing the main purpose of, of, of looking at an aerial photograph and learning about their local geography because they're doing the jigsaw. It's a different way of looking at it. Jigsaws are a way in which some children actually get access into various aspects of the curriculum. Um, and it's one of many resources that probably would uh, could be looked at. But it's part of a package of teaching about your local environment. And I would see it as an activity within the group as part of the local activity work that you'd be doing. OK, well, thank you, Paula, for that. Now let's move on to our final resource, which is a set of posters called Our Wonderful World. So, Paula, what is so wonderful about this set of posters? <laughs> We've got here um, a set of lovely pictures which take different aspects of the world, including um, Antarctica, uh, different aspects of the very hot, the very cold, the very wet and the very dry. And this uh, f follows on the, what you were talking about earlier, the fact is the value of a picture uh, and a large picture at that. Uh, and this one in particular, um, it doesn't actually show the countryside or whatever, but when you actually look at that, dramatic, um, and the, the awe and wonder, the citizenship, the um, globalisation questions that arise um, and terrific way in which they've actually been produced. Mm. I mean, uh, Colin, we, we can't criticise these on size. They're, they're a good size no, for, whole, for class whole class teaching. teaching. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Do you that. like the use of posters? I like, I like the use of posters and I like the, the, the size and the, 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 the images on these are very, very striking. And, you know, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And um, uh, pictures like these are brilliant, not just for geography, but you know, cuts across so many areas of the curriculum can be used as a starting point for so much discussion, so much project work in the classroom. Alan, are you a fan of these? Totally agree. I mean, they, they could generate a lot more than a thousand words. I mean, the picture, the, the picture on the top that we're looking at now, wonderful. I mean, there's so much there, geography, citizenship, a whole list of things you could talk about just from what the juxtaposition of the two of the images there. Fantastic. I mean, really good resource. I would love to have that in the classroom. Well, Paula, a very popular third resource there. Yes, I think that all the three sources we've seen, including this one, they offer a great opportunity to develop geography. Geography is seen as quite a difficult subject to teach, and the wider variety of resources we offer children and in different ways of learning, I think the better geography will be served. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. We've looked at three resources then for primary geography, and to recap, they were map symbol flashcards from Ordnance Survey, our school, 30-piece wooden jigsaw from Wild Goose at Blue Sky International. And finally, a set of seven wonderful world posters from the Geographical Association. For more information on all of these resources and to post your own comments about other primary geography resources, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to, email us. We're at resourcereview at teachers.tv. So a big thank you to our panel for today, to Paula, to Colin and to Alan. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>